In the movie Courageous, Javier is uh, offered a, a promotion. He's offered a new job, but he's told that, that he needs to, uh, to alter or lie on shipping reports in order to, to get this job. And so the, his supervisor offered him the job, and then he was to, to go back, and they were to talk about it the next day. And, and that's the scene that we pick up with in, in the movie Courageous. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Mr. Martinez. How are you this morning? Fine, thank you. How are you? I don't know yet. Please, have a seat. I trust you've had time to think about our conversation yesterday. Yes, sir, I did. And what did you decide? Are you on my team? Mr. Tyson, I am very grateful to have a job here. But I cannot do as you have asked. And why is that? Because it is wrong, sir. And it would be dishonoring to my God and my family to lie on that report. Do you understand what this may do to your job here? Yes, sir, I do. Javier, may I shake your hand? Young man, you just gave me the right answer. I've been looking for someone to manage inventory and shipping, and quite frankly, you were the last person on my list. But I need somebody I can trust. Will you take the job? We'll adjust your pay. I would be honored to, sir. Good. Then the job is yours. Now, Walter will go over all the specifics with you, and I'll make the announcement to the staff on Monday. Congratulations, Javier. Oh, and Javier, thanks for your integrity. It's rare. Well done, Javier. After six times, I was getting discouraged. We live in a world where there seems to be a a crisis of honesty. There seems to be a, a crisis of integrity. It seems that uh, if someone needs to, to lie in order to get ahead, that, that's what they do. You know, that just seems to be the, the day in which we live. You know, have you ever lied? Or maybe I should ask, when was the last time that you lied? You know, the, the dictionary defines a lie as making an untrue statement with the intent to deceive or to create a false or misleading impression. Now, I don't know about you, but, but I'm a, a little more comfortable with the first part of the, the definition that, that says, um, you know, making an untrue statement with the intent to deceive. You know, I, I normally don't make statements that, that I, I know or intend to, to be untrue. But that second part of the definition makes me maybe a little more uncomfortable. It also is creating a false or misleading impression. You know, we can become pretty good with our wordsmithing. You know, well, I didn't say that. You know, I, I, didn't, I didn't say that. You just interpreted it that way. Well, and oftentimes when we're working our, our wordsmithing, we... We know what we're not saying, but we also know the, the impression that we may be leading someone else to, to believe. You know, why, why is it that, that we lie? You know, there's all sorts of excuses that, that we may come up with for, for why we lie, but here, here's a few. We lie for, for self-protection. You know, we, we lie because we're afraid of the consequences of, of telling the truth. You know, did you break that window? You know, did you really say that? You know, do you like my new clothes? You know, did we, do, do you break the, you know, you know we, we lie because we uh, are afraid that we're going to get in trouble or maybe we're afraid of, of the rejection 
that might come or the conflict that might come if we actually tell the truth. Maybe we're afraid that we will will lose our job if if we're we're honest. One reason we, we lie is because we're afraid of the consequences of telling the truth. A second reason that we may lie is is because of self-centeredness. We lie in order to get someone to do something. We maybe don't tell the complete truth in in order to make the sale. You know, a person might get a recognition or or promotion or or credit or or, or sympathy if they tell a, a little bit of a lie. People lie on their income taxes because they uh, want to keep some of their money that, that actually should go to the government. Uh, people lie for, for self-centered reasons. Uh, a third reason that, that people lie may be because of, of self-importance. They lie because of pride. You know, they want others to, to think better of them. You know, they want to, others to think something about them or that they've accomplished, accomplished something that, that isn't really true. They lie to save face or to cover a mistake or, or to mere, appear more important or more successful than they really are. You know, we sometimes lie because it seems like the easiest thing to do. But oftentimes the, the road of least resistance can also be a, a slippery slope of, of sin. C.S. Lewis once said, a little lie is like a little pregnancy. It doesn't take long before everyone knows. You know, the mo- this morning we're wrapping up our, um, our series that uh, we've been calling Reach Out and Love this fall. You know, our, our theme for this series, our theme verse for this series has been found in James chapter 2, verse 26, which says, As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. Well, it's an issue that we can't just say that we have faith, but we need to do something about it. We, we must do something to, to put our faith into action. You know, our faith should impact how we live day by day. Our scripture reading this, this morning is, is actually just one verse from, from the book of James. James chapter 5, verse 12. And and James writes, Above all, do not swear, not by heaven or by earth or by anything else. Let your yes be yes and your no be no, or you will be condemned. You know, in the preceding verses, preceding this uh, James 5, 12, it talks about patience and, and perseverance. Keeping your word, keeping your promise sometimes takes patience. Sometimes it it takes perseverance. Sometimes it's not easy to to keep our word or or to follow through on on what we've said we're we're going to do. But but James encourages us that we need to to stand by our word. We need to to do what we said we would do. In the beginning of verse 12, it warns not to swear by heaven or by earth or by anything else. Now, biblical scholars disagree uh, as to the exact context of, of why James writes about this in, in chapter 5. Um, there you know, there are, are different thoughts, but it, it's probably not an issue of, of saying that, you know, prohibiting you from making any sort of, of an oath. You know, although there, there are some people, um, at least in days gone by, when... Uh, when they would enter into a court of law and they would put their hand on a, a Bible and, and, and swear to tell the truth, so help me God. You know, there were people that would refuse to do that because of this verse. You know, they, they wouldn't swear by anything on, on heaven or, or on earth. When, when I meet with, um, with parents that are bringing children for, for baptism or, or infants for baptism, and oftentimes I'll ask them, why is it that you're bringing the, this child for baptism? And, and they'll give me a number of different reasons. Well, you know, we want to affirm our own faith in this process. We want God's grace to, uh, to, to rest upon the, this child. You know, we, we want to give a public testimony that, that as a family we, we are Christians. Uh, but occasionally I'll, I'll get an answer and, and someone will say, well, I want to do this to, to get me off the hook. 
You know, that somehow doing this act of baptism gets them off a, a religious hook or a religious obligation. And, and what I say to them at, the, at that point is, it's better to have not made a promise to God that you don't intend to keep, than it, or it's better not to make a promise to God at all if you're not planning to keep it, as opposed to making a promise and then not intending to, to follow through on it. You know, as James talks about putting our faith into action, I believe that, that what James is talking about here is that when you make a commitment, when you say you're going to do something, you need to follow through. You need to let your yes be yes and your no be no. It's not an issue of, of making excuses, but it's just an issue that you don't need to, to swear, you know, to, to say I swear before God or, or um, you know, I, I give you a pinky square or you know, whatever it may be. You don't need to follow up in any way. As a Christian, you should be honest. You should, should have integrity to the point that if you say you're going to do something, if you make a promise, then you, you follow through and you do it. That's a part of living out your faith. That's a part of putting your faith into action, letting your yes be yes and your no be no. Edward R. Murrow, the, the famous media personality, once said, to be persuasive, to be persuasive, we must be believable. To be believable, we must be credible. To be credible, we must be truthful. If we're going to be persuasive about the, the light of Christ, then we need to, to reflect truthfulness, honesty, and integrity in our own lives. That's a way that we, we live out our faith. That's a way that we we put our faith into action. As followers of Christ, we put our faith into action by being men and women of our word, letting our yes be yes and our no be no. Well, there are a number of reasons where, why we maybe break our promises from, from time to time. You know, one reason is that we're, we're overly enthusiastic. We get overly enthusiastic and we can't say no. Someone asks us to do something, and, and we're always saying, yes, yes, I'll do that, I'll do that. And, and uh, in our enthusiasm, we, we realize that after saying yes, that uh, we really can't do that, and we have to come back and, uh, and, and tell, tell them no. Another reason that we, we break our promises is because we've overextended ourselves. We may want to do it. We may have good intentions, but most of our plates are already you know, very full and and how is it that, that we can put one more thing on our plate? Often it's an issue that we have to give something up in order to, uh, to put something more on our plate. A, a third reason that we break our promises is because we, we overestimate our own time and abilities. We think we can do it, but we don't realize how much time it's going to take. Or, or maybe we think that we're, we're more skilled or can accomplish it quicker than we, we actually can. You know, there's a number of reasons that we, we break our promises, and, and if, we, if we do that, we need to take responsibility. We, we need to, to say, I'm, I'm sorry. But James's admonition in verse 12 is, actually reflects an admonition that Jesus gave on the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5, when he said, simply let your yes be yes and your no be no. In this coming week, let me encourage you to, to memorize this verse. Simply let your yes be yes and your no be no. Maybe it's a verse that, that you remind yourself of several times during the day. That you know, God's admonition to you and putting your faith into action is, is to be honest. To, to let your yes be no, yes and your no be no, to follow through on whatever it is that you say you're doing, that you'll do. Because as you do that, it's a way that you put your faith in action. Let us pray. Father, forgive us for those, those times and those ways in which we dishonor you because we've not been honest with others. Lord, forgive us for those times and those ways in, in which our actions do not reflect the, the faith that that we say we have in our hearts. Lord, I pray that you would help us to live our lives in, in such a way that, that others would see us 
as being trustworthy and, and honest. And in that process, we might more faithfully you know, be able to reflect your light and your truth into their lives. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen.